Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial of easy programming in C++. Today I'll be showing you value returning functions in C++. These are pretty handy, uh, you can use them for various applications and today I'm going to use my Pythagorean Theorem program that I created several months ago in another video to show you how you can use it to calculate the Pythagorean Theorem inside a function and send it back to the main program. So I'm going to copy and paste that program here. Uh, once again, if you want to know where this came from, I recommend you visit my other video and look at where all these codes came from. Just to show you what the program looks like without the function, I'm going to run it. I'm going to do 3 and 4. The value should be 5, and there it is. I'm going to run it one more time. 1 and 3. And 3.16228. Those will be my control variables or consolidating data when I'm testing it later on. A value returning function is a function that returns one value for f back to the main program. Uh, in this case, we'll be returning the value of C. To declare a function, I'm going to go outside of the main program and declare it up here. You can do it inside the program. I've done it before. It doesn't really cause a big issue, but I prefer to do it outside as it keeps everything a little bit more organized if you have a lot of functions to deal with. Deal with. The function starts off with the type, the function type. In this case, it'll be float. You can use anything you want here. You can use a character. You can, uh, excuse me, I don't think you can use character. You can use integer. You can use double, long double. And in some cases, you can use bool, which is boolean for, and it'll return true and false or one and zero, which is really good for validating data. Float is followed by the name of the the function. In this case, I'm going to call it Python. You can call it anything you want, it's just a name. Inside is going to be the constant or the other type of the parameter inside the function. In this case, it'll be float again. It'll be float A, float B. They're separated by commas, and you have to declare the type of variable in front of each variable. So remember that. Uh, the variables inside the parameter can be anything you want. They don't have to be A and B they don't, because they're associated with the main program as by location and not by the actual variable name itself. So to implement the function I'm going to copy this part up until the semicolon but not the semicolon in itself. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to paste it open some braces and it'll look like a main program in itself. That's what a function looks like. Once again remember this is outside of the main program not inside. I'm going to cut and paste this part of the calculation in the main program which is the actual calculation and I'm going to the program has to that because the, because the job of the function will be to calculate the data and return a value. Since we're returning C I'm going to do return parentheses C, comma. In this case, we're sending down the values of A and B. I haven't done that yet, and the program will calculate the data of A and B and return the value of C. I'm going to get to that in a second. So here, up here, we're going to have to tell the program to send the values of A and B down there. So we're going to have to call the function, which is by its name. You don't have to include the float here, comma. I'm excuse the parentheses, and you have to tell it what variables to take. Once again, you don't need. Personally, I like the void function type of variable, so I'm going to put A and B. In this part of the program, it's crucial that the variables are the same as whatever the user input. Up here, they can be X and Y, because the dash part is associated by value. But you want to tell the program what value to send, and it'll equal here. Since we're using C, I'm going to add an extra step. This is just to show you how it works. I'm going to C equals to Y and this to X comma A and B. This step really isn't necessary. You can actually put the C equals to up here and just cross this part out. It'll do the same thing. It'll just take whatever the value of pi through A and B is returned and put it into C and it'll output it here. The third thing you can do is actually just copy and paste that and put that all the way into the output. It'll basically do the same thing. It'll take off two steps or two lines here and input and output the result in the same line. But I'm just doing this just to show you how the program works. 
here the values of A and B are being sent down, or the first value and the second value since they're associated by location. So here we're going to have to declare the value, the variable C. The only reason we have to do that is because I'm not sending the value of C down here from the main program because there's nothing to send down. It's just a blank piece of variable. They're going to have to declare down here, and I have to declare it up here just so the program can output it onto the screen. And this part of the program is done. I wonder where that went. There it goes. Uh, once again, just to explain it, the user is inputting inputting values of A and B up here. The program here is sending the values of A and B down to the function here. Once again, they're associated by by location, so it'll be the first va variable here, the first value, which is here, and the second value. Since this is located by, since this is connected by location, you can change the A and B to X and Y to D and C. It really doesn't matter. So once it gets the value, the program calculates it. A squared plus B squared. And it gets the value of C, and then C is square rooted in itself. And we get the final value of C. And since this is a value returning function, the program has to return at least one thing. And we're returning the value of C back into this part of the program. And C will be whatever the value of C is here, or, or the function. But just so that I don't confuse you, the value of C, this isn't the same as here. You can change this value to K if you want, K, L, M, N, it really doesn't matter because it's not associated with the C here, just so you don't get confused. Uh, let's run it, it should run properly. 3 and 4, that's 5. I'm going to run it again once again with 1 and 3, 1 and 3. And there, 3.16228 it runs perfectly. Uh, it's pretty simple and once again the value return function has to return at least one value. If you have a program where you have to send back multiple uh, multiple uh, values, I recommend you don't use the the value returning function, instead use the void function. You can send back as many values as you want back into the program using the parameter list as references. You can do that in inside the value return function as well, but it's not really it's not common practice of programmers. Uh, I'll show you how the void function works as well. Personally, a little bit more because you don't have to return anything, and you can actually output data onto the screen through the void function rather than sending it back. If you feel like doing that, and you can have as many functions as you want. Uh, I hope that this explains a little bit more about value returning functions and how it works. Uh, but uh, to take a little bit further, I told you that these variables can be little, can be anything you want. So I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to do x and y. I'm not going to touch any of these here. Those are off limits. I'm going to go down here, change this to x and y, since they're associated by location. So the value of a is five is going to send down the first value down here and since so this is the first value, first variable, it'll be 5. So x will equal to 5 as well. And b is 10, y will equal to 10. It's by location. If I change this to y and this to x, then the then it'll reverse, but a and b will always be the same. But remember, we have to change these values as well. a is going to be x and b is going to be y. I'm going to keep, uh, I'll change, I guess I'll change C too. We'll do Z. Z, 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 and return the value of Z. So the value of Z will be returned to this part of the program, and C will equal to Z. Let's run it. It'll be the exact same thing, I promise you that. We'll do 3 and 4, 5, and 1 and 3. 3.16228. It can be anything you want. Let's do 56 and 128. They're 139.714. There, it's pretty simple. Uh, once again, you can change the type of function to anything you want. And inside these functions, you can actually send back more than just float. You can send back characters, strings, more integer. You can set the parameter list as big as you want, as big as you need it. Hopefully, in the future, I'll show you a little bit more complex program with functions. Functions are fun once you know how to use it. They can be handy. They can help you pretty up your program. 
very well, uh, much better than arrays. You can also use arrays and functions as well. Hopefully, I'll get to show that to you as well. Uh, if you have any questions, remember you can always ask me. You can always visit my website at easyprogramming.net. You can email me as well. I always respond to emails and comments to my videos. Thank you for watching. If you have any recommendations or suggestions on what I should do for my future videos, feel free to let me know. Uh, thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.